Hello again. So this video, I am now starting a new little section of videos about working with code and programming and all that fun stuff in P5.js. And the topic here is conditional statements. Conditional statements, Boolean expressions, true or false. If this, then that. If this, then that. Otherwise this. How does a program make decisions while it's running? So in those previous videos when we started working with variables, the topic was kind of, okay, how do we store information and that information changes over time? Now we start to think about this new question, how can a program take different paths, right? The only path we really have right now is starting in setup. That's the first thing that happens. Moving on to draw and looping over and over again. Draw repeats over and over again. We saw that you have these event functions, like there was also the event function mouse pressed. So if you clicked the mouse, the code would take a break from draw, go execute something down here, and continue and draw again. But now I want to ask the question, how can the code execute differently each time through draw? So one time through draw, it might draw a purple circle, and the next time through draw, it might draw a pink circle. And in fact, this I would like to be the first example that I make in this particular video. I, I don't know if I, if I can get purple and pink just right, but uh, I want to have a circle that's drawn with two different colors, based on something that the user is doing. Perhaps where the user is positioning the mouse would be a good uh, place to start. So in order to do this, we need to learn about a conditional logic. Uh, another sort of term we can think of in this case is Boolean expression. Boolean logic from the mathematician, logician George Boulos, which <laughs> I'm probably not getting right. Internet will correct me, I assume. I dub, dub this over or put some sort of like pop-up thing. I don't know, whatever fancy thing that works here. So Boolean, Boolean, the word Boolean indicates that something is true or false. This is often also thought of as one or zero. Zero being false, one being true. And what, what I'm going to show you how to write is an expression that says, if something is true, do this code. If something is not true, don't do this code. So let's think about how the kinds of things, the kinds of Boolean expressions that might evaluate to true or false. So I'm going to give you a Boolean expression right now, and in your mind you will think about whether it's true or false, and hopefully this will be a rather easy one. Five is greater than six. This is not true. This evaluates to false. There's another one. Uh, seven is less than 210. This is true. So you can see I'm starting by creating these Boolean expressions using something called a relational operator. A relational operator. It's an operator that is going, that in this case is going to compare two numbers. There's lots of ways eventually in code that you'll see that you can have something that's true or false. But a good way to start is just comparing numbers. Are these numbers equal? Is one number bigger than the other one? Or is one number less than the other one? So now that we have this idea of how we can create a Boolean expression, a mathematical operation that evaluates to either only two answers, true or false, we can learn the syntax for writing that statement into our code. And this is how the syntax works. If we've got a word in the English language, if, that means exactly what it says if some Boolean expression that is inside parentheses, this is our Boolean expression, if Boolean expression open curly bracket, close curly bracket. So we've created another block of code. This is a block of code with a beginning or an end, just like set up and draw are blocks of code with beginning and ends. And the key thing here is if if this Boolean expression evaluates to true, then the code here should be executed. If this Boolean expression evaluates to false, then the code here should not be executed. So let's say I write something like, if five is greater than six, fill 255, zero, zero. So only ever if five is greater than six should you set a red color. Now if you're thinking about this piece of code here, you're realizing this is what I've, what I've created in this scenario is kind of 
ridiculous and, and useless in a way. Like five, no matter how much we try over and over and over again, five is never going to be greater than six, ever. I can't, I mean, I, maybe there'll be another universe or a parallel universe or some other kind of wormhole thing we go through and five will be greater than six. But right now in this room where I am under these very hot lights that uh, making me feel a little faint for a second, um, five is not greater than six. So you can see this, is, while this is the correct syntax, this is showing us the idea here, this doesn't really make any sense. The point of what I'm trying to show you is that if a variable is part of this Boolean expression, a variable has different values at different times of the day and different moments, depending on what other things are happening in the code, then that variable might sometimes be greater than six or might sometimes not be greater than six. And so we can change this expression to say something like if mouse x is greater than 100. So now, as the user is moving the mouse, it's not greater than 100, it's not greater than 100, it is greater than 100. So this code, even though it's sitting there in the draw loop, I haven't put it there yet, but that's where it will live, this code will not necessarily be executed. In fact, you could run the program. <laughs> if the mouse never goes past 100, that code will never happen. It will just sit there, never get executed. This is the power of a conditional statement. So let's go and look and put this into our example. And I think that will actually wrap up this video, just sort of the very, very basics. And there's more to it than this, but uh, um, um, I'll get to that <laughs> later. OK, so here we are. I have a nice, simple example that I prepared in advance. This is me actually preparing to make one of these videos in advance. Uh, I've got create canvas up here. Uh, I'm drawing a circle. So uh, no fill. So what I would like to do now is add something down here. If mouse x is greater than, and let's say 300, which is the middle of the window, fill uh, uh, 255, 0. Let's try to give ourselves some purplish color. Um, and we can see this is what I've added here. This is the syntax. So you can see, whoops, uh, <laughs> let's move over here. You can see a couple things here. So the Boolean expression is in between parentheses. The if statement opens with a curly bracket, ends with a curly bracket. And notice how fill gets indented. So the indentation is not change the way the code runs, but it helps you visually see. You could have a lot of lines of code. You could have a lot of things happen within that if statement. So those curly brackets say, this is the code that should be executed. And remember, if this evaluates to false, this doesn't happen. Draws looping over and over again. It might be true. It might not be true. So let's run this and see what we get. This is very exciting. <laughs> OK, where's my mouse? I don't know. I think it's at like 50. So we're, we're not there yet. OK, <laughs> Maybe it's like 100, 150, done 200. OK, we're getting there. We're close. It's almost there. It's almost there. Oh, yes, we got it. All right, so you can see that as the mouse gets beyond 300, that circle turns this purplish pinkish color. When I move the mouse back, it's off. So this is pretty exciting. And you could think like, we almost have this sense of like making a rollover here. I mean, we don't at all. But you can start to imagine, like, what's that if statement that says if the mouse is inside the circle, highlight it. So these are the kinds of things, you know, all these interface elements that you might be used to using on your computer. This is how they work. And I don't know if I will actually solve this particular problem in a video. It involves looking up the distance function, because you've got to test the distance of the mouse from the center of that circle. But that could be something if you want a kind of tricky uh, problem to look at, you might sort of see. Um, later, I, I'm going to definitely get to uh, an example that that uses a rectangle to try to see if, if the mouse is within the bounds of the rectangle. I think that's in my mind of future videos. So um, um, there's one other thing I want to mention just to kind of like make sure this video kind of like wraps itself up and doesn't leave off any details. The, I showed you these relational operators. There are other ones. There is greater than and equals. There is less than or equals. So in other words, uh, 5 is greater than or equals 6. This is actually true. Be oh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, I meant to say, like, <laughs> that's not true at all. <laughs> five is greater than or equal five, right? Because it is equal. Um, it's like I'm like, I was doing so well with this video, and now I'm kind of losing my mind here a little bit. So, but there are other relational operators that you could use. These are probably the most common ones you're going to get pretty far. And then there's also uh, <laughs> double equals. There's a funny distinction between a double equals and a triple equals in JavaScript that I'm going to leave out of this video and just use double equals because the, the distinction, uh, and maybe this is a bad idea. I'll have to re-record this or write something in the, the video's description. But um, there's a key sort of thing here. Uh, if I want to check this, if mouse x 
is equal to 200, I cannot say mouse x, I cannot use this as my expression. The reason I cannot use this as my expression is a single equals means an assignment operation, meaning I want to assign the value 200 to mouse x, which is not something I want to do. Mouse x doesn't even get assigned. It just picks up the value where the mouse is. So if you want to test if a, if a variable is equal to something, you need to use the double equals. And I know maybe when I get to strings, that's when I'll look at the distinction between double equals and triple equals. And some might say that you should actually use the triple equals instead of the double equals. <laughs> I really got off the deep end. If I really thought about this, I wouldn't have mentioned this in the first place. Um, so these are some things you can look at. But honestly, this is generally not such a good idea because it, you know, when are you really trying to test if the mouse is on an exact pixel? Generally, you're looking for ranges. So, um, and I think what you could get started with is take something you made earlier uh, where something is growing or something is moving according to the mouse and see if you can have a color change or a shape change or something you could do that's kind of interesting. Here's an exercise for you is have this shape change, have it be a circle or a square or possibly even is it, could you have three possibilities or a triangle depending on where the mouse X is or the mouse Y is. That's something you could try doing as a quick little exercise after this video. Okay, this was uh, 11 minutes and 20 seconds, which is, I'm trying to keep these to 10 minutes, so I almost sort of got that. And I'm going to hit stop now and record the next one. The stop button's over here.